سریع پیکر قربانیان به خانواده های ازادارشان دریغ شده است ابعاد فاجعه جان باختن و مجروح شدن هزاران انسان بیگناه از چهار گوش از آن است که در حد یک سانهه طبیعی یا یک مسئله محلی با اون برخورد شود خسارت جریه دار شدن عواطف ملیون ها مسلمان بزرگتر از آن است که صرفا با محاسبات مادی قابل جبران باشد افکار عمومی خواستار آن است که مسئولان دولت عربستان سعودی بیدرنگ به مسئولیت بین المللی خود در تأمین دسترسی کنسولی فوری برای شناسایی سریع و بازگرداندن بدون تأخیر اجساد متحر عمل نمایند همچنین ضروری شرایط لازم را برای بررسی مستقل و دقیق علل و عوامل این فاجعه و روش های پیشگیری از تکرار آن در آینده فراهم نمایند آقای رئیس، آقای دبیر کل، خانم ها، آقایان من به نمایندگی از ملتی سخن می گویم که دو سال قبل تعامل سازنده با جهان را رعی داد و اینک با افتخار می توانم اعلام کنم که امروز فصل جدیدی در روابط ایران با جهان آغاز شده است دو سال پیش مردم ایران در یک انتخابات توعم با رقابت به برنامه رعی دادن که ضمن حفظ حقوق، منافع و امنیت ملی خواستار تحکیم صلح و گفتگوی سازنده با جهان شدند این اراده ملی با یک برنامه دقیق و روش دیپلماتیک در برنامه جامع اقدام مشترک میان جمهوری اسلامی ایران و شش قدرت جهانی متجلی شد که بلافاصله پس از توافق با تصفیب شورای امنیت سازمان ملل متحد یک سند بین المللی این سند از نظر حقوق بین الملل مذاکره At this point, I deem it necessary to recognize the role of all the negotiators in achieving this agreement. We had decided to bring about a new environment while maintaining our principles, and we succeeded in doing so. Where necessary, we moved forward, and where necessary, we showed the courage for flexibility. And at each point, we made use of the full capacity of international law and showcased the potentials of constructive dialogue. The key point regarding the success of dialogue is the fact that any actor in the international system who pursues maximalist demands and does not allow space for the other side cannot speak of peace, stability, and development. As in commerce and economic activity, where the interests of both parties should be taken into account, in politics and international relations as well, multilateralism and win-win solutions should be the basis of engagement. Mr. President, the United Nations was established to sustain global peace and security after two world wars. But unfortunately, it must be said that in most cases, this important international institution has not been successful or effective. This time, however, the United Nations made the right decision. 
Though we protest the adoption of unfair resolutions against the Islamic Republic of Iran and the imposition of sanctions against the Iranian nation and government as a result of misunderstandings and sometimes overt hostilities of some countries, However, we believe, as an old Iranian saying goes, the sooner you stop harm, the more benefit you will reap. Today is the very day that harm is stopped. Security Council Resolution 2231, despite some significant shortcomings, was an important development and the basis for terminating sanctions imposing resolutions against Iran. We consider as unfair the conduct of the Security Council in the past and insist that Iran, due to the important fatwa of its leader and its defense doctrine has never had the intention of producing a nuclear weapon and therefore sanctioned resolutions against Iran were unjust and illegal. Sanctions by the Security Council and unilateral sanctions by some countries were based on elusive and baseless allegations and created difficult conditions for our people. But these sanctions never in any way affected the policy that we adopted and the approach we took towards negotiations. We proved in these negotiations that there is nothing on Iran's table other than logic, reason, and ethics and where necessary, legitimate and de decisive self-defense against any kind of aggression. For which ultimately the United States of America was prompted and forced to set aside pressure and sanctions and choose the table of negotiations and discussions. Our seven countries and the European Union expended considerable time and diplomatic capital in these negotiations, and therefore they should exert their utmost effort to protect and implement the agreement. We deem the compliance of all parties with their commitments as the fundamental factor in the success of the implementation process of the negotiations. Parallel to the implementation of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, we also expect the nuclear weapon states to take necessary steps to fulfill their commitment of full nuclear disarmament based on Article 6 of the Non-Proliferation Treaty. Furthermore, we expect them to play a positive role in the creation of a nuclear weapons-free Middle East and not to allow the Zionist regime to remain the only impediment in the way of realizing this important initiative. Mr. President, the nuclear deal, which is a brilliant example of victory over war, has managed to disper disperse the, the clouds of hostility and perhaps even the specter of another war and extensive tensions from the Middle East. The deal can and should herald a new era and lead to positive outcomes regarding the establishment of sustainable peace and stability in the region. From our point of view, the agreed-upon deal is not the final objective, but a development which can and should be the basis of further achievements to come. Considering the fact that this deal has created an objective basis and set an appropriate model, it can serve as a basis for foundational change in the region. Our policy is to continue our peace-seeking efforts in the region based on the same win-win principle and act in a way that would lead to all in the region and world benefiting from these new conditions.
This opportunity can be seized in order to look to the future and avoid focusing on the past and rebuild our relationships with countries in the region, particularly with our neighbors, based on mutual respect and our common and collective interests. Unfortunately, the Middle East and North Africa has turned into one of the world's most turbulent regions. With the continuation and intensification of the current condition, the turmoil can spread to other parts of the world. In today's interconnected and borderless world, countries and regions encounter great difficulty in protecting their borders and preventing the spread of insecurity and instability. The gravest and most important threat to the world today is for terrorist organizations to become terrorist states. We consider it unfortunate for national uprisings in our region to be deviated by terrorists and for the destiny of nations to be determined by arms and terror rather than the ballot box. We propose that the fight against terrorism be incorporated into a binding international document and no country be allowed to use terrorism for the purpose of intervention in the affairs of another country. We are prepared to assist in the eradication of terrorism and in paving the way for democracy and ensuring that arms do not dictate the course of events in the region. As we aided the establishment of democracy in Iraq and Afghanistan, we are prepared to help bring about democracy in Syria as well as Yemen. We support the consolidation of power through the vote of people rather than with arms. We defend the rule of the majority that respects the rights of minorities. Today, Iran, while safeguarding its historic and cultural heritage, is look into the future, not only the distant future, but also the near future, with a bright outlook for cooperation and coexistence. I say to all nations and all governments that we will not forget the past, but we do not wish to live in the past. We will not forget war and sanctions, but we look to peace and development. Through the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, we were not solely seeking a nuclear deal. We want to suggest a new and constructive way to recreate the international order, an order based on mutual respect, non-intervention in the internal affairs of others, as well as on sustained cooperation and coexistence between the members of the United Nations. In order to build a peaceful future, we must learn our lessons from the bitter lessons uh, from the bitter past. We know that the only way to perpetuate peace is through development. Peace without development is merely a recess, while resentment and suspicion builds. However, peace alongside development lets anger and resentment dissipate and be replaced with hope and respect for others. We have repeatedly said that the only way to uproot terrorism in the Middle East is by targeting its underlying social, economic, and cultural causes. Economic interactions may bring about lasting security and transform the region into a haven for peace and development. After the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, Iran will stand ready to show that the practical path to security and stability is through the development that comes with economic engagement. Iran, with all of its economic and cultural potential, is well positioned to, be, to become a hub for export-oriented investment. 
Iran is also eager to show that we can all choose a lasting peace based on development and shared interests that will lead to a sustainable security rather than a volatile peace based on threats. We hope to engage with our neighbors in a wide range of social and economic cooperation, which will enable the achievement of political understanding and for even fast and even foster structural security cooperation. In the international system today, mutual economic ties are deemed the foremost factors in facilitating political cooperation and reducing security-related challenges. Mr. President, in 2013, from this very stage, I called for combating violence and extremism. Consequently, you, the representatives of the international community, unanimously gave it a seal of endorsement, and hence, the WAVE resolution came to be. The implementation of WAVE requires well-intentioned solutions and the use of experiences gained in the realm of diplomacy. I am pleased that by placing together the support for the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action with the invaluable support for WAVE, we may now devise a plan to resolve the problems of a shattered Middle East under the clause of brutality and savagery. With a view to fighting ignorance, dictatorship, poverty, corruption, terrorism, violence, and their social, political, cultural, economic, and security impacts, I would like to invite the whole world, and especially the countries of my region, to form a joint comprehensive plan of action to create a united front against extremism and violence. This front must create a collective and global movement to tackle regional problems in a serious manner through dialogue, prevent the slaughter of innocent people and the bombardment of civilians, as well as the promotion of violence and killing of other human beings, provide for the stability in cooperation with established central governments to maintain stability. And once stability is established, build diplomacy and democratic governance in the Middle East region. Ladies and gentlemen, Iraq, Syria, and Yemen are all examples of crises being stoked through terror, extremism, violence, bloodshed, invasion, and the indifference of the international community. They are similar examples displaying cases of displacement, homelessness, and fleeing from the horrors of war and bombardments. Their problems have persisted because the international community has failed them and because of incorrect actions of newcomers to the region and naive trans-regional actors. Consequently, the wave of destruction has gone beyond the Arab world and reached the gates of Europe and the United States and has resulted in the destruction of the relics of civility and precious works of ancient civilizations and more broadly has resulted in the death of humanity itself. We must not forget that the roots of today's wars, destruction and terror can be found in the occupation, invasion and military intervention of yesterday. If we did not have the U.S. military invasion of Afghanistan and Iraq and the U.S.'s United States unwarranted support for the inhumane actions of the Zionist regime against the oppressed nation of Palestine, today the terrorists would not have an excuse for the justification of their crimes. It is urgent for the United States government, instead of explaining the truth of the region and throwing about baseless accusations and pursuing other dangerous policies in defense of its regional allies who only cultivate the seeds of division and extremism, 
This must be brought to an end and its actions must be made compatible with the realities of the region. Mr. President, despite the many problems in our region today, we believe in a promising future. We have no doubt we can overcome the obstacles by wisdom and prudence, as well as by the use of new and powerful capacities and by relying upon our civilizational roots and our serious resolve. We, in light of divine revelation, have faith in humanity's bright future in which people live in peace, tranquility, and spirituality. We believe in the will of nations to pick the path of goodness and purity. We believe that ultimate victory will be won by those with good-natured piety. Thank you all for your attention. <clears throat> On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Islamic Republic of Iran for the statement just made. May I request representatives to remain seated while we greet the President.